Chapter 36 to 42. Einar's POV. The first battle of King Arthur was against the army of King Arthuas of the Pennites. At the mouth of River Glane, two armies could be seen ready to raise their swords. On one side was the army of King Arthur. His army was composed of 100 cavalry and 400 foot soldiers. Whereas King Arthuas was standing proudly on the other side with his 500 cavalry and 1,200 foot soldiers. There were also some magical beasts like giants and dire wolves. On paper, King Arthuas has the greatest advantage over the tiny army of young King Arthur, but the reality is far ahead of anyone's imagination. King Arthur was carrying the Sword of Selection and was reinforced by the best knights and mages. Merlin was also there with his dreamlike charisma and magical reinforcement painting the safe victory of Arthur's army. I was also here standing with Merlin on his horse acting as support of the army. Artoria was the tip of a hill in full armor and glowing sword on her hand. She was on her favorite horse Edo who was now the partner of the king and now called Dun Stallion. Her girlish features were visible from her face but she was not perceived as female to others. You could only see a majestic King Arthur who was on his path of victory. I am Arthur Pendragon, the sole heir of the throne as well as your rightful king. Aaoo. She addressed her army which was efficiently answered by knights. False king didn't answer my right on this island and so he called his rebellion. However, as we have the right to rule this island, none shall stand in my way. Men. Are you with me in this quest? Aaoo. Artoria finished her speech. Even I was moved by her words, but I had control over my emotions. The opposition had a large army, but they were fellow Britons and not Saxons. Artoria's goal was to defeat King Arthuas and take the state of Pennites. It was not the annihilation of the people, but the blood was necessary. She nodded in my direction to begin the first part of the operation. I nodded and rose in the air and called my spear. It soon turned into an orb of light before falling on the ground. Cracks opened on the soil and a huge veil emerged with a big bud on the top of it. It then peeled and a giant sunflower bloomed from the bud facing the army of King Arthuas. Form 4, Sunflower A gigantic shoot emerges from the earth, towering over enemies, as a flower bud blooms and shoots several projectiles that are capable of a great amount of destruction. I was just waiting for the opportunity to use this against someone and now was the time. It was King's best long-range energy weapon that could destroy even a city in minutes. Except for its little long charging of 10 seconds, there was not much drawback if you want a one-direction area of effect damage. I pointed my finger at the army who were terrified upon witnessing such a gigantic flower and spoke a word, bang. The light brightened from the mouth of the flower and shot a devastating beam of light towards the large army of King Arthuas, reducing the army of orderly men of 1700 into mere 1000 soldiers in panic. Boom asterisk. With a big explosion, the knights in the middle of impact vanished instantly while surrounded knights were killed from the devastating blow. I then dispelled the sunflower and nodded at Artoria who was also shocked by the impact of the magical weapon. Caliban is a strong weapon, but if you consider all forms of chastiful and huge firepower then Caliban is mere a straw against a sword, Castifal. Even the army standing behind me started to show fear towards me. Gawain and Bedivere were visibly trembling but they soon calmed down. I was also a little shocked by the firepower it showed but also a little sad since I killed a lot of innocent people who were just obeying orders from their lord. Families whose loved ones vanished from the surface won't even receive the dead bodies of their loved ones. I can only sympathize with them for standing on opposition regardless of intention. Charge. Artoria cried the charge towards enemy forces. Both armies soon clashed against each other. One was the short army of King Arthur in an orderly manner and high morale and the other was still a thousand men army with an already defeated will. I could see that knights with great mana had necklaces. They were the magic jewels that I prepared for them. It gives users a huge attack and defense boost while also healing them. They don't need other mages for the support in that sense and what's more, those gems could be used again. Of course, I only prepared the quality jewels for Artoria, Gawain, Bedivere, and Brother K since they were leading the front forces while others were carrying gems of lower grade. Other foot soldiers were buffed from me and Merlin. I didn't involve myself in the combat and remain in the air to observe the situation only. I have already killed a lot of people so I was not in the mood to spill more blood uselessly. However, my eyes caught up with an enemy general who was fighting our forces bravely. What caught my interest was the red spear he was using. Unfortunately, the one who was close to him was the knight under me, Bedivere. Arg! Bedivere groaned when the enemy general sliced his chest and kicked him away. However, his wound soon started to heal. 
How weak-willed are you to use magic artifacts in war? But no worries, this General Wan will send you hell soon. The man named General Wan said pointing a red spear towards Bedivere who was still recovering from the severe wound and charged at Bedivere to finish him off. Gi Balg. Did you say Gi Balg? General Wan heard a voice and before he could respond, his spear was blocked by a transparent barrier encaging Bedivere while also healing him. Form 8, Pollen Garden, a large barrier is formed around a person and is capable of withstanding even the most powerful attacks. The barrier is made of pollen from the sacred tree which has the capabilities of slowly healing and subsides the pain immediately. What the? How could my unblockable attack be blocked? Yeah, I heard something similar in the past. I landed between General Wan and Bedivere who was fully healed in no time with the help of Pollen Garden. I am sorry, Sir Einar. Bedivere apologized since I have to come to his rescue. Don't be. You are still not a proper knight, Bedivere. Now leave him to me and make sure not a single pest gets in my way. I ordered him. Bedivere nodded and then engaged to fight with other knights. I then looked at General Wan who took his guard against me. So you are the little monster who destroyed our army with magical sunflower of yours? How about you join our side? King Arthuis will reward you handsomely. Are you done? So that's how it is? Then there is nothing to talk about. He was about to charge when four soft hands grabbed his limbs. What the? He was immobilized by Mono, the guardian before he could even move an inch. I will ask you once, where did you find this spear? I asked, holding the crimson spear. Do you think arg? Crack asterisk. He was going to retort but Mono crushed his left leg. I really don't want this way of asking since I could simply take your head and read your memories but I enjoy a little from torturing you. I got it from royalties from Irish Island. Just kill me already. He spilled the beans the moment I tried to crush his second leg. Very well, I said and without looking at him, I performed hand signs and my spear sliced his head. He told me what I want and I didn't want to humiliate him further by torturing him or forgiving him. A true knight's best reward is to die from the hand of a strong enemy. Forgiving them would be considered an insult so I didn't pester with useless stuff like forgiveness and such. Of course, my ideology of being a knight is different. Einar, this spear is very important in finding the god you are looking for. Text appeared on the book. It was Elaine who could communicate with me now. I thought so. If my memory is correct then this spear if not then very similar to Gibalg of certain blue-haired dog with full-body tights. It is the same spear but its ability is reduced to only 20% of its full capability. It is just a spear with some special magic ability but nothing much. I was surprised holding another weapon of the Servant of Stray Knight. The first being Excalibur. For the moment I stored the spear in the inventory and saw Artoria raising her sword high in the sky after achieving her first victory. It was the first battle of King Arthur's 12th battle. Stats. Name, Einar Sirius. Race, human slash fey. Age, 20. Physique. Strength, C plus dash B. Mana, EX. Endurance, C plus 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 dash B plus. Agility, B plus 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 dash A. Luck, EX. And my height increased to be 148 centimeters. At this time, I was more focused on increasing my height than my stats. Anyway, two years have passed since King Arthur won his first battle at the mouth of a river called Glane. In the past two years, King Arthur fought numerous battles and won all of them. The second, the third, the fourth and the fifth battles were on another river, called the Dubglas, which is in the region of Linuis. His legends were echoing all around the island even outside of Britain. Many knights all around the world came and swear an oath to King Arthur. Many other knights also joined the round table. Gawain and Bedivere were the first to join. They forged their way out in battles and proved their worth as knights of the round table. Gawain was so far strongest among the knights after me and Artoria. He was strong and loyal to King Arthur. He was also the one who led the armies on his own against minor countries and emerged victoriously. Bedivere, although he was not very strong, he wise and had a bright will that raises the morale of knights. He was also the managing officer of the knights, administering affairs of knights as well as other matters. Among the new knights who joined the round table, two princes stand out the most. You could remember them as Lancelot and Tristan. Lancelot joined the round table only after a month of serving as a knight. The reasons were two of his distinguishing features. 
One was his strength that was similar or stronger than Gawain and his holy weapon forged by Vivian, Arondite. I remember my mother telling me that she raised another son beside me and she gave a weapon to him. Lancelot du Lac has a son named Galahad who was still a child around 13 years old and was showing good skills as a knight. However, I don't think that they had a harmonious relationship like father and son. Galahad would rather train under me than a fine knight like his father. Both of them joined Artoria after the word of her feats roams in France. Anyway, I have a good relationship with both of them. Lancelot is polite and composed and started treating me like a little brother since we both have the same foster mother. However, he was somewhat childish and an M. On other hand, Tristan was also the knight who has strength that speaks like strings. He joined Artoria's army after he was forced to leave the royal court. To serve under a great king, he also joined Artoria and after seeing her flawless victories, he didn't hesitate to stand by her side. Tristan is a child born from Rivalen, the king of Leonois, and Blanchefleur, the younger sister of Mark, prince of Cornwall. Apart from this, he didn't tell us anything. Maybe because of his sad past and his tragic love story so we didn't pester him further. I also knew about his legends from Tristan and Assault. However, I didn't know much about him as compared to other knights. He was a passive knight whose facial expression always remained that of a sad poet so he didn't get along with anyone but only me since we both are poets. He also carries his weapon which was a bow with magical strings that he flicks off the air by shaking this string, firing what should be called a vacuum arrow. So this is it for today. Thank you my fellow knights for your presence. Artoria finished her meeting. She was now wearing her trademark blue attire. Although she looked like a girl, she was using a mystic code that lets others perceive her as male. This is our honor, my king. It was Gawain. He had become Artoria's bootlicker after she rescued him from an evil demon, me. He basically worships King Arthur where he will serve her no matter what. A good dog he became. Although he was using a magical weapon, he was still the only knight on the upper part ranking of round table who doesn't have a distinguished holy weapon. That's right. We will soon reach Camelot. It is just a matter of time, right Sir Einar? It was my older brother Lancelot du Lac. He had short violet hair and handsome features with bright armor. He was the third person who treated me like a family apart from Brother Kay and Artoria. Can we talk about something else? Like fishing or fishing? I said dryly. They were so into the victories and such that I was starting to get bored. Mainly because I was the only one who likes to make jokes and lighten the mood. Sir Einar is just like Water Lily, very light that brightens the environment and fragrant with a strong will that defeats enemy beautifully, Tristan said and flicked strings of his harp, producing melodies. Sad yet beautiful. He had crimson long hair and squinted eyes, like Asians. When he spoke, every knight present opened their eyes wide realizing that the man was awake and not sleeping because his eyes were always close. Artoria was among such who was having a hard time keeping with Tristan whether he was sleeping or awake. Every knight likes me here whether through fear or respect. Well, almost all of them fear me, even Artoria except Tristan, who respects me for my skills. Where is Merlin? Bedivere asked. Well, he was busy past days so now he playing with maidens. What is a good term for him? Artoria asked. Pussy magnet? I raised a brow. Pussy magnet wait. Sir Einar, control your language. She scolded me by I could see her hoax swinging left and right meaning that she laughed internally. Other knights also chuckled but composed themselves. Okay, I will go for walk, I said and got up to leave but not before asking a riddle to Tristan. What can fill the room but takes up no space? Light. Artoria. It's light. Lancelot. King's majestic aura. It was Gawain. Air? Airhead Bedivere. Holy light? Tristan. I am out. K. Wrong. It is, fart. I shrugged my shoulders and left before I could hear their curses and swears. I came to a forest to take a rest and freshen my mind. Side star. When will I leave this place? It has been two years and we were still trying to chase after Camelot. I was trying to look for a good time to leave her side. There was much need for me since all the existing knights were capable to lead armies on their own. Merlin was also good support and mage whose magecraft was more versatile than mine. My magecraft is based on firepower while his magic is very versatile. He could even make a mouse a cat if he wishes for. 
I am against this kind of magic. I don't like to meddle with the laws of nature. Magecraft and mages are often involved in dirty works since they have to polish their skills by experimenting on animals and sometimes even on humans, but I dislike such practice. Sure, I also have done some experiments on animals, but I made sure to suck the life from them first leaving a soulless body that can't feel pain. I will kill anyone who stands against me or my loved ones, but I am not a ruthless person. Mo asterisk. I heard a cry when I was strolling and saw a baby lion cub injured near the tree. I could hear baboons so I guess that this is the work of filthy science. Ah, don't cry little one, I said and cast a healing spell on the cub. He was first afraid of me, but after I cast a healing spell that has the essence of a fae, he calmed down and started cuddling in my arms. Someone will be delightful to take care of this baby. I took the lion cub in my arms and left. Ianus POV. Artoria was writing some documents when I opened the door and entered with a lion cub in my arms. Einar? Artoria spoke when she saw my sudden intrusion into her study without any kind of warning but her sight immediately fell on the cute lion cub in my arms. Artoria, look what I found, I said then showed her cute lion cub sleeping after being healed. Ah, it's so cute and so her girlish side came out. She then coughed with rosy cheeks and asked, where did you find it? A, you know baboons kidnap lion cubs for revenge. I just found him under the tree injured. I healed him and was going to look for his mother but I decided to show it to you. I explained. Although she had draconic essence, she likes lions more than lizards, I mean dragons. She was always been busy with her work and was the only one who didn't know how to take time to relax. I was the only one who knew what type of burden she was trying to take so I always tried to make something for her to relax or forced her to relax. I smiled after seeing her curious gazes and placed my hand on her head. Relax a little and take him, I said and asked to take the lion cub in her arms. Can I? Of course. I then handed the sleeping cub to her arms. Ah, she was overjoyed but again recalled that she was coming out from her character and blushed. No one else is here. Enjoy taking care of him. I said and smiled. Biba, there is work for me to solve. She was reluctant to let go of the cute cub but she still had work to do. Hey, didn't I assign Bedivere for this job? He was the only one with the best management skills so I was wondering why she was doing that paperwork. Due to urgent matter, he left for some time. I shook my head. Can't she just hands them to someone else? Okay, I will be dealing with them. Go and play with the cub. Don't worry much. I waved my hand and sat on her seat to sort out documents. Einar? Yes, Artoria? Thank you. She smiled warmly. You're welcome, Artoria. I also smiled and immersed myself in paperwork. This is the worst part of any head of the department. Artoria also sat on the sofa with a cub in her arms and started petting the future king of the jungle. I sighed seeing her relaxing like this. I wonder if I was not here then she would have definitely isolated herself without letting anyone realizing this. Merlin didn't even have time to look for her well-being as a human so I never expected anything from him. Brother K was the only one who realized this problem but he was too a little help because he felt a little guilty and weak towards Artoria. Rar asterisk. I was in the middle of work when I heard Cubs cry and saw him crying in Artoria's arms who was unable to calm the poor thing. Einar, I didn't do anything. He just woke up and starts scratching me. Artoria explained while ashamed that she couldn't even take care of the baby lion. Relax Artoria, try coaxing him. I think he is hungry. Do you have milk? Well, you obviously have. Please prepare a bottle for him. She just conveyed her order. She knew that I always had 10 bottles of ready-to-consume warm mild in my book storage since I like to drink milk daily to increase my height. To be more precise, I was forced to drink milk as I had no choice. I sighed and nodded. I took out a warm bottle of milk and an elastic layer to make a nipple. That was actually the skin of a certain frog was used to make a condom, it was Melon's idea. Soon I prepared the bottle and hand it to Artoria. Hey, are you sure? She was not confident in taking care of the cub. The Lion King is hesitating? I raised my brow. Of course not. She sneered and took the bottle from my hand. Then she fed the milk to the cub who happily drank the bottle within a minute and started crying again. Jesus. Every animal comes under your wing, become an eating pig. I scorned seeing another animal reading to use my food supply. I still remember the dog we took care of once. Sorry. She smiled awkwardly. 
I shook my head at her passive nature. She used to be demanding, but she now started to become a little submissive. This nature is not wrong, but I liked her previous nature. I then decided to sacrifice all my milk reserve to make Lion Cub and Artoria happy. Fifteen minutes later. Rar, Kerr. A cute lion cub could be seen happily cuddling in Artoria's arms or licking her cheeks like a son to his mother, father if Arthur. He he he, you are mama's boy. Good boy Artoria was happily showing her emotion while playing with the cub. Ugh, my 0.01 centimeters of height of this week. I was grounded grieving on the insane decline of the milk reserve. This cub drank all 10 bottles of milk which lasted for a week. I knew that I will be sacrificing something for this animal that's why I never liked animals since they will definitely eat more if the food is coming from my hands. I am sorry, Einar. I will make it for you. Artoria apologized and showed sympathy for a second before resumed playing with the cub. She knew that I will refill my reserve anyway and she was blunt to me as long as it comes to food. Well, it's worth it. I also smiled seeing my beloved happily playing with her favorite animal. I took out a magic camera and took some photos secretly. I made this using magic with limited capacity to picture some memorable moments with her. I left them to play on their own and then sat to finish the paperwork. After a brief period, I heard a knock and opened the door. I am sorry, Dash. Shoo. It was Bedivere who tried to apologize without even looking that it was me but I hurriedly put my finger on his lips and pointed his attention to the sleeping Lion King of Britain and future Lion King of the Jungle on the sofa. Arthur is tired so let him rest, I told him and brought him out of the room. I wanted to let her in a peace for some time. I am sorry for my delay, Sir Einar. I will take any punishment. Bedivere apologized formally this time. It's noting, buddy so no need to worry. I patted his shoulders. He sighed when I eased his mind. By the way, there is a new maid outfit that I wanted to try. I suddenly exploded a bomb on his head. Please no. He made the expression who was just told that earth is flat. Well, I was the ruthless person to Knights of the Round Table and can't let anyone go without proper yet sweet punishment. Einar's POV. Rar asterisk. A cute cry could be heard from a lion cub playing with Artoria on the sofa. Leo, don't cry here. Einar is working for our sake. Artoria was scolding the cub who listened to her and nodded with a low cry. Yeah, she gave him the name Leo. You too. I shook my head with a helpless smile seeing two cute lions happily playing with each other. It has been a month since we adopted the cub. He used to live with Artoria whether in her room or camp when we were on any kind of expedition. Although the little cub was away from his mother, Artoria was taking good care of the animal whenever she got spare time. The spare time was when I have to sacrifice myself for paperwork for her sake by the way. Anyway, I was happy that she started to get a little relax over the passage of time. Mo, asterisk. The cub whined again with a sorrowful look. Einar, I think he it is time to send him to his mother. Artoria reluctantly suggested. She knew that the cub needs his mother and we were too busy to take care of the baby lion. In the other ten days, another war was being held against Saxons so we couldn't spare time for the cub. Yeah. How about King Arthur's little expedition? I raised my brow. She didn't get it first but then realized that I was suggesting a holiday for the two of us. We were freaking busy with tons of work and no one was either willing or incapable to take care of work of this level. Only Artoria where I could execute orders since we were the strongest knight slash mage in her army. Yeah, I became stronger than Merlin even he said that himself, no it would be wise to say that I was way stronger than anyone, even Artoria now that I have unlocked all forms of chasty foal. After thinking that we indeed needed a break, she nodded with the determination of a king. We then gathered all knights of the round table at the entrance of the forest. Her horse Ido could be seen whereas I and Artoria were standing to announce the reason for our short departure with a lion cub in her arms. Attention everyone! We have an announcement. I decided to spoke instead of her. As you know our king is taking care of a cub for this past month. However, as the current situation suggests, it is time for our honorable king to return the future king of the jungle to his rightful place. You just want a vacation. It was Brother K making a smug face. Other knights wanted to agree with him but they knew that the moment they spoke to mock me, their career might be at stake. Doesn't really matter, the king is assisting another king here. We shall now leave. Sir Gawain, you will be in charge of the settlement. Does anyone have any question? 
I made Gawain head of the knight in absence of King Arthur since he was third strongest and wisest knight. When will dash? So there is none. You are the knight of the round table capable of even withstanding storms so take care while we are away. It was Gawain who wanted to ask but I was not gonna answer. I then nodded at Artoria who was King Arthur in others eyes and she nodded. She then climbed on her horse and placed the lion cub on her front while I also climbed and sat on her back and grabbing her waist with a smiling face. I was so excited to spend some alone time with her more than finding the lioness. She pulled the halter and we took our leave. Third person, POV. Is my brother, gay? Lancelot asked Kay after seeing his little brother so close and clingy to King Arthur. Ask them, Kay smirked and pointed other knights of the round table. None of them even wanted the question or answer since Lancelot was asking about Einar, the little demon of Roundtable, and if by any chance he got the wind that they were spreading this kind of rumor behind his back, Einar knew what exactly more horrifying than death for each knight. It is love between a knight poet and moon. Poet could only admire and sing for the moon, but moon could only shine. It was Tristan. Which is sad. Lancelot also decided to train rather than listening to Tristan's sad poetry. Einar's POV. Einar, why your hand? Artoria said while looking in front and holding a halter. Although her face didn't show any reactions, I could see her hoax swinging and her ears being rosy. Hee hee, it is my time to flirt with you. I can't let this chance away. I smirked and licked her ear taking full advantage of her occupied attention of controlling the horse, looking after the cub as well as the way towards the jungle. I was holding her waist while also rubbing her navel. If it makes you happy. She just smiled. She didn't mind my action and just let me do whatever I want. Boo. I snorted since she stopped giving embarrassing reactions. We then roam around the forest before entering the jungle. When it was getting dark, she made a camp while I gathered the wood to cook. After eating our meals, we just sat in front of the camp while gazing at the stars. I also placed a bounded field to stop any uninvited guests. I noticed that she still was not using a bun on her hair but a single pony. Artoria, mind if I set your hair? I asked her. Yes, please do. She nodded with a smile. I then took a blue ribbon that had magic sealed on it and then start making her trademark hair bun. I used the ribbon that I prepared especially for her but didn't get time to give it to her. After finished making the bun, I showed her the mirror. It is so beautiful. Thank you, Einar. She beamed a smile. She then lied down with one arm extended indicating that I should use her arm as a pillow. Isn't that a man's job to offer his arms to his lover? I raised a brow. I am doing it. She also smirked. Kia Arthur San, Sugoi I beamed like a girl and lie on her arms. I also didn't forget to wrap my arms around her body and burying my face in her lemons. I then closed my eyes hoping that we stay in that way forever. Artoria's POV. Einar, I love you so much, but I can't express my feelings for you yet. I know that I can never pay for your kindness in my life and painting it with colors, but I want to be a king that you should be proud of and unify my country where we could lead peacefully. Just wait a little longer. I smiled while ruffling his soft hair. I wished I could just stop using this fake persona of King Arthur and marry Einar, but only I could make this country peaceful and do justice to my people, all for the people and Einar. Whenever he was on my side, I felt grateful for this life. With my prey to marry him and give him happiness, no attain our happiness, I also closed my eyes hoping that we stay that way forever. Einar's POV. For the next two days, we continued to search Leo's mother and finally able to find the lioness with her pride. Due to me being Fay and Artoria having dragon essence, pride didn't dare to attack, only gazing from afar. Artoria, it's time. I placed a hand on her shoulder. She was sad that she had to let Leo go. Even I was the same since we shared a unique bond with Little Cub. She nodded and placed the lion cub down. Go Leo, little life of a prideful lion. She said patting Leo's head. Leo also cuddled with her before running back to his mother. We then waved our hand to the pride that went away from our sight soon. Artoria then looked at me with affections in her eyes and wrapped her arms to my neck staring into my eyes. I also didn't question her intention and our faces closed distance and our lips met. Einar's POV. Rar asterisk. A cute cry could be heard from a lion cub playing with Artoria on the sofa. Leo, don't cry here. Einar is working for our sake. Artoria was scolding the cub who listened to her and nodded with a low cry. Yeah, she gave him the name Leo. You too. 
I shook my head with a helpless smile seeing two cute lions happily playing with each other. It has been a month since we adopted the cub. He used to live with Artoria whether in her room or camp when we were on any kind of expedition. Although the little cub was away from his mother, Artoria was taking good care of the animal whenever she got spare time. The spare time was when I have to sacrifice myself for paperwork for her sake by the way. Anyway, I was happy that she started to get a little relax over the passage of time. Mo, asterisk. The cub whined again with a sorrowful look. Einar, I think he it is time to send him to his mother. Artoria reluctantly suggested. She knew that the cub needs his mother and we were too busy to take care of the baby lion. In the other 10 days, another war was being held against Saxons so we couldn't spare time for the cub. Yeah. How about King Arthur's little expedition? I raised my brow. She didn't get it first but then realized that I was suggesting a holiday for the two of us. We were freaking busy with tons of work and no one was either willing or incapable to take care of work of this level. Only Artoria where I could execute orders since we were the strongest knight slash mage in her army. Yeah, I became stronger than Merlin even he said that himself no it would be wise to say that I was way stronger than anyone, even Artoria now that I have unlocked all forms of chastity full. After thinking that we indeed needed a break, she nodded with the determination of a king. We then gathered all knights of the round table at the entrance of the forest. Her horse Ido could be seen whereas I and Artoria were standing to announce the reason for our short departure with a lion cub in her arms. Attention everyone. We have an announcement. I decided to spoke instead of her. As you know our king is taking care of a cub for this past month. However, as the current situation suggests, it is time for our honorable king to return the future king of the jungle to his rightful place. You just want a vacation. It was brother K making a smug face. Other knights wanted to agree with him but they knew that the moment they spoke to mock me, their career might be at stake. Doesn't really matter, the king is assisting another king here. We shall now leave. Sir Gawain, you will be in charge of the settlement. Does anyone have any question? I made Gawain head of the knight in absence of King Arthur since he was third strongest and wisest knight. When will dash? So there is none. You are the knight of the round table, capable of even withstanding storms so take care while we are away. It was Gawain who wanted to ask but I was not gonna answer. I then nodded at Artoria who was King Arthur in others' eyes, and she nodded. She then climbed on her horse and placed the lion cub on her front while I also climbed and sat on her back and grabbing her waist with a smiling face. I was so excited to spend some alone time with her more than finding the lioness. She pulled the halter and we took our leave. Third person, POV. Is my brother, gay? Lancelot asked Kay after seeing his little brother so close and clingy to King Arthur. Ask them, Kay smirked and pointed other knights of the round table. None of them even wanted the question or answer since Lancelot was asking about Einar, the little demon of round table and if by any chance he got the wind that they were spreading this kind of rumor behind his back, Einar knew what exactly more horrifying than death for each knight. It is love between a knight poet and moon. Poet could only admire and sing for the moon but moon could only shine. It was Tristan. Which is sad. Lancelot also decided to train rather than listening to Tristan's sad poetry. Einar's POV. Einar, why your hand? Artoria said while looking in front and holding a halter. Although her face didn't show any reactions, I could see her hoax swinging and her ears being rosy. Hee <laughs> hee, it is my time to flirt with you. I can't let this chance away. I smirked and licked her ear taking full advantage of her occupied attention of controlling the horse, looking after the cub as well as the way towards the jungle. I was holding her waist while also rubbing her navel. If it makes you happy. She just smiled. She didn't mind my action and just let me do whatever I want. Boo. I snorted since she stopped giving embarrassing reactions. We then roam around the forest before entering the jungle. When it was getting dark, she made a camp while I gathered the wood to cook. After eating our meals, we just sat in front of the camp while gazing at the stars. I also placed a bounded field to stop any uninvited guests. I noticed that she still was not using a bun on her hair but a single pony. Artoria, mind if I set your hair? I asked her. Yes, please do. She nodded with a smile. I then took a blue ribbon that had magic sealed on it and then start making her trademark hair bun. I used the ribbon that I prepared especially for her but didn't get time to give it to her. After finished making the bun, I showed her the mirror. It is so beautiful. Thank you, Einar. She beamed a smile. 
She then lied down with one arm extended indicating that I should use her arm as a pillow. Isn't that a man's job to offer his arms to his lover? I raised a brow. I am doing it. She also smirked. Kia Arthur San, Sugoi I beamed like a girl and lie on her arms. I also didn't forget to wrap my arms around her body and burying my face in her lemons. I then closed my eyes hoping that we stay in that way forever. Artoria's POV. Einar, I love you so much, but I can't express my feelings for you yet. I know that I can never pay for your kindness in my life and painting it with colors, but I want to be a king that you should be proud of and unify my country where we could lead peacefully. Just wait a little longer. I smiled while ruffling his soft hair. I wished I could just stop using this fake persona of King Arthur and Mary Einar, but only I could make this country peaceful and do justice to my people, all for the people and Einar. Whenever he was on my side, I felt grateful for this life. With my prey to marry him and give him happiness, no attain our happiness, I also closed my eyes hoping that we stay that way forever. Einar's POV For the next two days, we continued to search Leo's mother and finally able to find the lioness with her pride. Due to me being Faye and Artoria having dragon essence, pride didn't dare to attack, only gazing from afar. Artoria, it's time. I placed a hand on her shoulder. She was sad that she had to let Leo go. Even I was the same since we shared a unique bond with little cub. She nodded and placed the lion cub down. Go Leo, little life of a prideful lion. She said patting Leo's head. Leo also cuddled with her before running back to his mother. We then waved our hand to the pride that went away from our sight soon. Artoria then looked at me with affections in her eyes and wrapped her arms to my neck staring into my eyes. I also didn't question her intention and our faces closed distance and our lips met. Einar's POV. Boom asterisk. An explosion could be seen from the chieftain's building when a figure flew from the dust and crashed outside the town. ARR, damn, my jaw. I shook my head after standing from debris and realized that my jaw was dislocated from her connected punch. So who's got broken jaw and is an arrogant bitch? Not now Elaine. I knew that I had underestimated her greatly, but except for a little dislocated jaw, I was fine. Luckily, I was wearing a defensive jewel that broke out after taking the maximum damage and removing other effects of her punch. You are lucky that she was not aware of your defense mechanism or you would have been in great danger. I know Paimon, I know. It was my reckless to underestimate her, but I was not aware that she was so much good at hiding her presence or power. She was the first elemental I was facing beside Vivian. I was quite certain of Vivian's strength, but she was in a different league. When I was healing my jaw and contemplating the situation, I saw the same beautiful woman walking from the dust. She was now only wearing her strips-like revealing outfit with a long flame skirt. She was also carrying two blades on each hand. Blood was also flowing from the town and being absorbed by her. It means that she killed all the people in the town whose blood she was observing. I didn't know that a mage is that capable of resisting my powerful attack. She smiled while walking up close. And I didn't know that a pretty lady like you will punch such a handsome person like me? I also took my guard and start casting buffs and attack spells silently. Humph. A lecherous man like you should have died a long ago. Her expression darkened must be remembering when I was ogling her body. Wow, talk about biased feminism. I am sorry, but you are the one showing your skin. Are you going to give a reason that it is your way of fighting? What? Have I set foot on your tail, Chinese woman? Why don't you remove the rest of your clothing? In this way, I will be more distracted by your jiggling jugs. I am giving you a piece of good advice. You shameless asshole. She roared and swung her glowing blades in a cross that launched two devastating arcs towards me. Oi, why are you in such a hurry to die, China girl? I dodged her attacks by flying on sideways. Her blows were so destructive that they created two six meters wide arcs on the ground. Elaine, examine her strength. I then told Elaine that was the spirit of my book to investigate her source of strength. I am sensitive to mana and could sense it but she was the polar opposite of a fairy. She was an elemental vampire, a kind of undead that is opposite to a fairy like me. I can deal with anyone who has regular life force, but I was uncertain as to what extent her strength was being revealed. Plus, she appeared to have more experience in fighting than anyone I have ever met. I was quite confident in escaping, but I didn't want to leave this bloodsucker in my country. She will only become a headache if I don't deal with her here and now. Affirmative, but it will take a little longer. She is efficient in hiding her true strength. 
No shit Sherlock, I can see that, but how long it will take? Five minutes. You mean 10 chapters like when Frieza tried to destroy planet Namek in five minutes, but it took 10 episodes? No, it's legitimate five minutes. Now stop filling word count and do actual fight. Oi, don't attack the wall. I dodged another attack when I was in the middle of a talk. Her attacks were more devastating than before and from her looks, I didn't think she was consuming much mana. You will surely die sooner or later. Why don't you give up already? She said while calmly walking towards me. Ah, uh, now you're breaking my heart speaking like second-rate villain. Haven't you read Wuxia and Xianxia shit? I decided to use my talk, no jutsu, for meantime to let Elaine examine her strength. From the drama she put, although she was strong, I thought that she was quite stupid. Says the person who got punched by the same stupid person. I ignored Elaine. Wuxia and Xianxia, shit? How dare you mock our sacred culture? She fumed after hearing my mock and taking the bait. Her mana surges like blood and the sky started to turn red. This is one of the capabilities of elementals who can change the atmosphere depending on mood. I also make the environment gloomy whenever I was sad. Wait, that really exists? I thought it would take more than a couple of more hundred years to born. Next thing is what, you have cultivated for hundreds of years and now you are an immortal or some kind of similar shit. Oh. My. Sun Wukong. I sometimes seem to forget that I was living in a fantasy world where legends appeared to be true. I have quite a good knowledge about China and its history but it was after the influence of the Mongols and where China gained independence from Japan and become the superpower that I knew. I also remember dynasties that appeared but they were also superficial. HM, it seems like the rumor that you know the future knowledge is true. She smiled. I was taken back. It was true that I had future knowledge but the rumor was not like that. Another mage beside Merlin has clairvoyance, was the rumor. I was always mentioned in the shadow of Merlin so I was fine with that but she knew something other than what actually circulates. I had to verify her source. Ho! Oh. Now that you get a glimpse of what is happening, why don't you obey and come with me? And she immediately shattered the hype she created with those third-rate villain lines. Can you stop with those cliché lines? Answer me, who are you and what you want from me? I decided to ask her a simple question because I couldn't handle her third-rate wuxia lines. Now that's a good question. Then allow me to reintroduce myself, I am known as Yu Marin, consort you of my dear Xiang Yu. She introduced herself. I widened my eyes. I certainly remember her identity, not by her name, but by the person she mentioned. Xiang Yu was a Chinese warlord who lived during the late Qing dynasty, who lived in 200 BC, from the age of gods. If what she said was true then she was that famous consort you. I read about their love stories from legends, but I never would have thought that this famous concubine would have become an immortal. No, she said she was known as Yumeran, it means that she becomes an immortal before she becomes consort you. History was a little messed up due to magic and different mythologies coexisting together. As for what my purpose is. She opened her mouth again and grinned, is to take that book from you and go back to my precious Xian Yu. In short, it is your death. My eyes flared and magic spells appeared on the book. Oh, I am fucking tired with your lines. Explosion. A big magic circle appeared above you. It was then her time so took her guard. When did you dash? Skibbity bob mm dada. Boom asterisk. Boom asterisk. A big explosion could be seen replacing the magic circle and destroying the surrounding with it. Did I get it? After the explosion, a deep pit was formed however due to dust, it was still hard to see you. I took out my spear and spun it to create an airwave to clear the dust. I saw bloody you covered in wounds and even missing an arm. Are you alright, miss you? Because I am still in the mood to play with you. I decided to mock her a little. She was a worthy opponent whose strength was unparalleled so I was hoping to fight with her. Ha! Huh. It is nothing. She only smirked and within a minute her wound started to heal rapidly. What the? I was surprised to see her healing speed. It was even faster than Pollen Garden. Einar, she is not using her mana to generate. Elaine told me about Yu's healing capabilities. I know, and what about her stats? Einar, she is using the life force of the blood of people she killed. As for her mana, I don't know, but she either doesn't possess mana or using an external source. External source? It is possible that she is connected to Root. 
At her statement, I widened my eyes, but soon calmed down. So does it mean dash? Yes, but first figure out how to heal with her first. Don't get hit by her attacks, they are highly corrosive. I know, but what is the fun if I don't even enjoy a good fight? I didn't know why, but I was feeling kinda excited to fight with you, maybe due to my monkey scion blood. Do as you say, don't come crying like an idiot. No thanks. You was soon healed. I don't know how but her clothes were also fine, maybe it was so-called anime logic. That was a good surprise attack, I appreciate it. Why thank you. But you that was your last chance to kill me. She raised her hand in the air and a big crimson ball formed. She then pointed her ball towards me and smirked. Let's see how you managed to dodge this. The crimson ball was shot like a bullet towards me. Ah, shit. I instantly flew in the air and dodged the crimson ball. Boom asterisk. The ball exploded upon hitting the ground and a big explosion took place even bigger than mine. I was also not unscathed as I took some damage to my right hand. Ah, hot. Hot. My skin started to deteriorate and my arm turned cold. Chasty full form 8, Pollen Garden. I then encaged myself in the Pollen Garden to heal my arm. I could have fought with her using my single arms only but I knew that her corrosive powers were lethal for a fairy like me. You also didn't let go of this chance and fired more crimson bombs towards me. Boom asterisk boom asterisk boom asterisk. However, Pollen Garden was able to withstand every last bit of her attack. The only downside was my mana consumption. It neared drowned 50% of my mana which is equal to 10 times Merlin's or Vivian's total mana reserve. How is that possible? Yu is desperate to even damage the pollen garden but she couldn't make even a dent on such a shield. Haha, <laughs> bitch, that's what she said. Why don't you try harder? I decided to mock her by showing my butt and guess what, she was enchanted instead of getting annoyed after seeing my pale butt. Now who is a pervert, huh? She shook her head with red cheeks and then poured her powers on her flaming twin blood, charging them with her vampiric powers and then slicing the air forming two cross arcs. Boom asterisk crack asterisk. This time, her attacks were able to make cracks on Pollen Garden. Well, I am good to go anyway. I then dispersed Pollen Garden and flew in the air. It was still hard to control myself in the air since, flight, is a magic spell and not my natural ability. However, it is still not impossible to get that ability. Why don't you come down? You tried to bait me since she couldn't fight me in the air. Come down? Why are you so desperate? Asshole. Come down and fight like a warrior. Who said I am a warrior? And I am not fond of fighting with bitch with an itch. Gore. She was flustered with anger but then soon calmed down. Einar, she is changing her surrounding to her favor. Yeah, and she is going to launch her final attack. I took some distance and landed on the ground. What are you doing? Just testing something. Don't tell me. Cry and beg for forgiveness, because I am going to show you hell. You raised both of her hands in the air. The cloud turned into crimson, then pure red. The sky was also giving the feeling of hell. Surrounding also seems to turn lifeless. I was just calmly waiting for her to recite her lines and the name of her last attack like an anime character. I could bitch slap her in a middle attack, but I was curious to see her last attack. The eternal wail of one abandoned even by death. Oh sky. Oh clouds. Rain tears of compassion to curse life. As she finished the chant, the cloud exploded and rain of big crimson blood drops started to fall everywhere. I smirked and expanded my arms as to welcome all the attacks without any kind of shield protecting me and a smile could be seen on my face. Boom asterisk boom asterisk boom asterisk. Crimson drops exploded everywhere and turning it to lifeless except for one spot that was me. Soon the cloud dispersed after running out of power. I could feel their jaw dropping faces. What the foo asterisk K. What the foo asterisk K. Both Elaine and you were shocked that I didn't receive a single hit from the rain of attacks. How is that possible? That was my most powerful attack and you didn't even take a single hit. Yeah, that's what I am also confused about. I shrugged my shoulders, but then my eyes turned cold. It is now time to end this. I waved my hand and before you could even respond, a big teddy bear grabbed you's all limbs leaving her paralyzed. When did you? She was confused when Mato suddenly appeared behind her and made her immobilized, but then she smirked, you know you can't kill me with normal means. That's why I have a surprise for you. 
splash asterisk. Gua. She spilled blood when a spear pierced from behind that emerged from Mono. It is called fossilization. You have just run out of option. Form 3, fossilization, this form of chastifole is a twin-headed spear with a spearhead shaped like the claws of a crab. This form has the ability to petrify an individual whom it pierces, rendering them unmovable and immobilized as a statue even if they are still alive. She then started to turn stone until only her head remained. So any last words like so this is it or you can use my body and let me go some kind of thing. Body using option is unavailable by the way since I have a girl who is acting like a man and I am not MC of Akakin who could do anything for a pair of tits. I shrugged my shoulders. Gua, your mouth can't just stop running. She weakly said. Yup. Very well. She smiled and looked down just like villains with who you would show sympathy. I am sorry for killing innocents. She then started to confess. Apologize to them yourself since you will be meeting them some in the hell. And, thanks for a good fight. It was my dream to die with a good fight. Now I can finally reunite with my Sienyu. She seemed like a vampire from Jojo. I wonder if those thick thighs vampires exist. Hey, you still haven't answered my question. You know I could keep you alive as long as I want. Haha. <laughs> I pity you and envy you. You, who is free from any predetermined fate. She then looked into my eyes and warned me. Let's see how long you are gonna run when the will of this world comes after you. She then turned into stone completely. I then waved my hand and my spear swung shattering you Marin's statue and ending her life. So I guess this concludes what is coming after you. Yeah. Gotta prepare for it. I dryly stated and then fly away back to Artoria's settlement only to hear the news that King Arthur broke his sword of selection, Caliban. Third person POV. A person could be seen watching the flying figure of Einar. She was a girl wearing black kimono. Her hair is short, ink black hair, pale skin color, and black eyes that could be described as being of clear void. Her eyes got narrowed and she soon disappeared without leaving any trace of her existence. Omake 8. Einar entered the men's toilet to take a leak. He saw another charming male on the urinals. He had silver hair and a dazzling charming face much like Einar but this boy's charm was on another level. Einar silently walked towards one urinal beside the boy was using. He realized that boy was a little embarrassed so he decided to introduce himself. Einar Sirius, do lack, knight and mage of the round table, Britain. Oh hello, Mr. Sirius, nice to meet you. I am Lon Ling Wang, Prince of Lon Ling, from China. The silver-haired boy intruded himself. I am sorry if I am discomforting you due to my face since it is my noble phantasm. Haha, <laughs> don't worry Prince. I am resistant to any kind of buffs if it doesn't reach rank EX. Haha, <laughs> is that so? Since they were in toilets so it was not appropriate to make conversations. Now the competition started. The real reason why urinals were invented was not that men could take a leak, you have to show your dominance to your neighboring fellow who is the real man. Both Lon Ling and Einar looked at each other with the eyes of rivalry. They knew about this fact despite being from the early ages. Einar, who is also known as the man having the essence of H protagonist, didn't want to lose to this slender-looking prince. Lon Ling was also a prince. Although he was generous to distribute his wealth among common people, he didn't mind showing his manly side and showing his rivals how a prince's thing looks like. Einar opened the zip and take out his anaconda. His asterisk. Lon Ling also opened his zip and take his python. KHSSSS asterisk. Both monsters were almost even but in the end, our MC won the show. I guess I can't compete with a man who is rumored to satisfy so many kings of knights, Lon Ling admitted his defeat. Haha, <laughs> it was fair competition with a prince whose face is a noble phantasm and had numerous concubines and wives when alive. Though I have to say, throwing in wild is still best. I would suggest near the tree. Like lions. Haha. <laughs> And so two charming males who were competing for the sizes of their dicks just a second ago became friends and happily chatting until a girl entered the toilet and stood beside Einar. Ah, Missy? I don't think this is the right place for you to use. Einar decided to remind the female that she was in the wrong place. Yes, please leave. It is not appropriate. Lon Ling was also a little angry with this shameful female. She had pink hair with a long braid and a canny on her face. Nashishi. I like you guys' reaction, but I am just a charming servant, Astafo, the servant introduced himself and his gender. 
Lan Ling and Einar understood who this servant really was, it was a trap. But before they had time to digest the image of a trap taking a leak with them, the trap in question didn't wait any longer and opened his zip too. What came out was a shadow with a terrifying presence. The reality of the toilet around Lan Ling and Einar changed into that of hell. The shadow grew bigger and bigger until it reached the height of 15 meters. What? Lan Ling and Einar were terrified, trembling in each other's arms. The thing soon came out of the shadow. It was a real giant demon dragon. Roar asterisk. Aaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaa